my lovely, lovely imps, I have been asked as a favor from a friend to weigh in with my incredible and powerful opinions uh, on a bit of Twitter discourse that's been going on today that's gotten fairly intense. And uh, I don't usually like to like weigh in on, I don't know, slap fights between people on Twitter. But I actually feel like I have a little bit to say about this. And I want to try and see if I can maybe add a little bit of nuance that might be missing in this conversation. So I'm going to I'm going to show you what I was sent and asked to react to and give my opinion on. Here we go. So this is a tweet from some from or, uh, Mudahar over at Ordinary Gamers. Many of you will know who Mudahar is. We've seen him on our show before. We've reacted to his stuff before, okay? And he is quote tweeting a tweet by Denims TV, who we've actually done stuff before, though it's been a while. Uh, we've we've done a panel with Denims. We've also um, we've also been raided by Denims. We've also raided into Denims, and I believe we also did some video games with Denims way back in the day. So we're fairly familiar with Denims. Um, and I think all of this is downstream of a out of context clip of Hassan in which Hassan said something about streaming is difficult or something like that. But let's read what we've got here on our hands and then we'll go forward. So Denim says, as someone who has worked 12 hour shifts with a four hour commute while going to university full time, streaming is easily the hardest job I've had. The post stream social exhaustion is so real. I don't know how anyone could do it every day. And then Mudahar replies by saying, streaming is by far one of the easiest and most privileged jobs one can have. If you're successful, the war rewards far outweigh any of the negatives. Compare it to any service job, cybersecurity or nursing, and you'll find something actually exhausting. Now, there's a lot that I could say here, um, and I will. So let me start off with the first thing. Cybersecurity is an interesting thing to insert there because um, I actually know a lot of people, including my own family members who worked in cybersecurity, and there is a large range of how busy you actually are in cybersecurity. Because having worked in IT, directly working with the cybersecurity people myself, that's an interesting one to insert in there because some cybersecurity jobs are quite literally, you play League of Legends on your computer until you get an email ticket that says, help, I got locked out of my computer. But, but, okay, but, there is some truth there with regard to nursing and service jobs. I just was, I just wanted to laugh a little bit at the cybersecurity insert because cybersecurity is a broad field and there are some definite loafer jobs in the cybersecurity world, okay? Um, yeah. That was an odd thing. Okay, so seriousness time. All right. Is streaming the most easiest and privileged job that one can have or is it the hardest job? that someone can have. Well, I'll point out that Denim's here did not say that it's the hardest job ever. Rather, that Denim said that personally, it's the hardest job that she's had. And I, I think it's a little weird to like jump on this in this way when it's literally just Denim's giving her opinion about the hardest job she's had. Um, I don't know. I, it, I don't know about that. So that seems a little bit a little unfair. You know, this is one of those situations where I feel like there's a little bit of an uncharitability going on here. However, let's let's tackle the question as a whole. Is streaming the easiest job ever or is it actually pretty hard? And I think that the answer is that it depends. Um, streaming is an unbelievably risky career. Um, in fact, I have told people on numerous occasions that if you're going to start streaming, do not start it as a career. Do not pursue streaming as a career option. 
Um, I was lucky that in the, the moment of my life when I started streaming, that I was able to basically devote a lot of time to streaming. And I got lucky. But in that people started to pick up on my show and really like my stuff and that I was able to devote a lot of time to getting out there. And there's a whole lot that goes into it. But the reality is that the vast majority of streamers are not successful. The vast, vast, vast majority. In fact, I would say that the amount of streamers that actually manage to make it to a sustainable living is probably in the realm of single digit percentages. We know that from Twitch stats, only about 8% of streamers ever in all of streaming history have ever made it to the partner level. And you cannot actually make a living doing at the partner level. You can make a supplement to a normal income, but you can't make a living just being a partner. It is just not how it works. And so in reality, what you have is an industry that has a less than 1% of the population is very, very successful. And for those people, it is true that you probably, your rewards probably do outweigh any negatives that you could ever consider um, for the most part. And of course, there's some exceptions to this, given that some of those, uh, you know, fairly well-off people have had to deal with stalkers, have had to deal with physical violence, have had to deal with, you know, swatting, things like that. But we'll, we'll say those are outliers for the most part. I don't know if it's fair to do that. But for now, we'll just, we'll wait and talk about that in a little bit. So I think for like less than one, significantly less than 1% of the streaming population, people who are multimillionaires, they're probably doing pretty goddamn well. Um, and they're making a lot of money. But almost everyone else who touches this streaming industry is not in that position at all. And in fact, most of those people are not doing streaming as their primary career and are often doing it as a sort of artistic supplement uh, that also might happen to bring in some money, depending on who they are. The vast majority of streamers are hobbyists. And those streamers put in a lot of work into their hobby. And there are some pretty major negative downsides to streaming. Um, there's a couple of things that, that I think people misunderstand about artistic fields in general. There's a similar thing that happens, by the way, with people who work in the gaming industry, where if they complain about their job, a bunch of people will basically be like, what are you complaining about? You're in the gaming industry. Anybody would love to make video games. I love playing video games. So of course I would love to make them a completely and utterly different thing. Making a game is not the same as playing a game. But it happens all the time. And you see the same thing happen in movie, in the movie industry. Oh, I love movies. How dare you say that you had to film a scene in the baking sun and that you passed out from exhaustion because a director was telling you that you're not gonna get paid if you don't stay on set in the blazing heat and you passed out from heat exhaustion and had to go to the hospital. I like watching movies, so how can that be? Well, obviously, the creation of something is very different from the enjoyment of something. While you all watching right now are probably doing something else while I'm streaming, or maybe you're just sitting comfortably at your computer or at on your couch, whatever, I am actually working. You see what I mean? So the creation of something is very different than the consumption of a thing. Even if the consumption of a thing is great, I mean, the most obvious example, this is food, right? Feels great to make a cheeseburger. Might not feel quite as great to make a cheeseburger. Feels great to eat it. Might not feel so great to make a cheeseburger. I think I actually mixed those up a little bit. So there's that aspect, okay? Um, and I want to talk about, uh, so, so on the other side, being able to stream in the first place 
is often in and of itself a symbol of some type of privilege. Um, in that you have to be able to afford, at the minimum, a microphone and an iPhone, which might not seem like that much, but a lot of people don't have that. So, and I recognize this, like I was very lucky to be able to get to the position of being a streamer at all. Um, and I think that most people who get to that position are the beneficiaries of some type of privilege. Um, but also the conversation around privilege only goes so far, right? Uh, and I always find it funny when people who don't generally subscribe to like the concept of privilege end up weaponizing privilege as if it's like a, an instant write off of like that your that your opinion isn't valid or something like, oh, sorry, privilege, you're invalid or whatever. And I'm just like, that's kind of strange to me because I don't know is is like uh, is are most of these people particularly concerned with the privilege that goes into, because if we want to go that far, then if you're watching streams, you're also in a privileged position because in order to watch streams, you need to have reliable internet and a computer of some sort. You need to have either a phone, which is a computer or an actual computer or a smart TV or a, a Apple TV. You're, you're, you're on, you are in a, a first world type situation in all likelihoods if you're even viewing a stream so there's this whole i don't know how well the privilege conversation applies to the world of streaming now as for the actual work of streaming there's a lot of variety between various types of streams and various types of streamers um but there is a lot of work that goes into streaming, okay? I have worked a lot of jobs, okay? I started streaming four years ago, okay? Before that, I was a freelance copywriter, okay? Uh, and that was a terrible living, okay? I worked all the time and I made jack shit, okay? I was writing the most horrible, boring shit that you can possibly imagine. Product pages for companies was mostly what I was doing. I also did some other uh, supplementary work that was a little more fulfilling writing for like some apps where one of them was like a history app where I would, uh, where I would write, I would do some historical research and write out interesting articles like, uh, you know, kind of like summaries for, uh, um, for, for various historical um, sites, you know, like a statue in some town or whatever. It's for a travel app. Long story. But most of what I did was writing all the time, tons and tons of word count of the most boring stuff that you can imagine, but it has to be original. It can't be, you know, you can't just copy paste. It has to be 100% original. It's just very boring to write. Um, and I didn't make much money doing that at all. And before that, I worked in sales uh, for a, a rental car company, which it was a nine to five job. You would go in, it was a nine to five service job. You go in, you talk to people, you rent them their cars, you sell them upgrades, you sell them insurance, you sell them gas plans, etc. Nine to five at the desk on your feet. Duh, 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 duh. And, uh, there was downtime at times, depending on the season. It's not like there wasn't any downtime, but it was a nine to five job with a lot of work involved and and you had to make commission or you were not making, you would not keep your job. It was very intense in that regard and very competitive. Before that, well, actually during that time, I also worked for an airline uh, doing like uh, working on the, on the runway. So I would load luggage, drive those little things around. I'd marshal the planes in. I did all that kind of stuff. And then I stopped doing that job. And then I worked in IT for a while while still working in sales part-time. And then I went back to sales full-time. Before that, I worked in retail for a very long time. So I've worked a lot of different jobs and I've worked a lot of nine to fives. And there are aspects of those jobs that are that were very, very difficult. And there are obviously things I would not want to do about that job anymore. 
when I worked nine to fives, the most miserable part was not having any control over my schedule or very little control over my schedule. In fact, I think that's one of the most sort of humiliating and uh, infantilizing things of the modern nine to five, quote unquote. They're not even nine to five. Like, let's be real. They're not fucking nine to five jobs anymore. You have to, if you work in retail, and even if you work in some other jobs like sales, you don't have regular days that you work. You get a schedule every week that you have to go check at your job and they'll have assigned you to random days that you have no control over based on the whims of a manager. That shit fucking sucks. And I would never want to go back to that. In fact, that's one of the things I love the most about being a streamer is that I can make my own goddamn schedule for the most part. Um, however, um, however, there are drawbacks to streaming and there are things about streaming that I would argue are very, very difficult that simply do not exist at basically any other job. And a lot of them are difficult to quant are, are difficult to quantify, but they can be qualified. So for one such example, um, the psychological toll of, of being even a small time public figure like myself, I am not famous by any stretch of the, of the, of the word. Okay. Tonight I had at peak somewhere around 520 people watching me, which is amazing by the way. I love that and I'm proud of that, okay? But I am not famous. I am not a famous person. I'm not a millionaire, okay? Not even close, all right? I have a I have a passionate small following. But even with that, my face and name and information about my life goes way further than my following. And there are a lot of people out there who are insane towards me, okay? To the degree that it has been a perpetual problem since I started streaming, dealing with various levels and intensities of stalkers. Whether it's people who just persistently follow you all over the internet um, and, and send you messages all the time or uh, find ways to avoid boundaries that you've set up and continually approach you no matter how many times you tell them you're not interested, to people who legitimately try to find your personal information, to people who are trying to find your personal information with the purpose of doing harm to you, to people who try to get close to you um, in order to be able to, be, to obsessively fixate on you. These are all things that I personally have had to deal with. And it's very difficult to deal with. And I never even once, okay, had to deal with anything like that in any of my jobs prior. Never once did I have to deal with someone um, always having access to some facet of me that even while I was sleeping, there's this, there's a small knowledge in the back of my mind that somebody out there is likely trying to find more information about me with malicious intent. Never did I ever have to deal with that once. And I am not the only streamer who has to deal with this. And if any streamer tells you they don't have to deal with this, they're not telling you the truth. It is varying degrees depending on what type of streaming you're doing but it is a massive problem. The internet puts you in front of so many people that you never know um, when you're gonna find somebody who's gonna build a fixation on you. And sometimes it gets really bad because of course the worst case examples are when you have someone with power who also wants to hurt you, which is something that I've experienced as well. Danny says, to really push this point further, people have tried to dox me because I'm your editor. Exactly. It is insane. Another aspect of this is that there is a serious social toll that comes from that. Um, you have to, people close to you, the people who love you and who care about you, um, they are often in danger 
in one way or another, and sometimes they will know it and distance themselves from you for nothing that you did, just because of crazy people on the internet. And again, this is a problem I deal with despite the fact that my show, basically, my show does not make enough money for me to uh, to pay all of the bills of my household, okay? I don't have a big household, but it, we're not that close, okay? I make a decent amount of money on here. I can pay my portion of rent, I can pay for food, and I can put a little away to save. Um, but I still make like a pretty, like if you look year to year, my income is not high, okay? I am not making more than I made when I was in sales. I'm dead serious, but I like this more than sales. And I don't like it more than sales because the job is easier, but rather because the job is more creatively fulfilling, if that makes sense. The sales job was easier than this job in almost every single way, besides the scheduling. The scheduling was terrible, all, like no doubt on that, okay? But the sales job was fairly easy. I knew what I would have to do every single day when I came in, I would do it. There's downtimes, there's lunch, whatever. The pay was more than what I make now from my stream. Um, and I didn't have to create anything. I didn't have to take anything home with me out, outside of there were there's some workplace drama and, you know, conflicts with managers and whatever that you do have to bring home with you, but not really. I didn't have to prep anything when I was at home, okay? When I went home, I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. This job, I am always, the moment that I turn off the camera, I am thinking about and prepping for whatever my next stream will be. I, you know, I have work at all times basically available to me to be done that needs to be done in one way or another. So while it is true that there is a lot of things I really enjoy about this job that I really love, I can't help but feel that the idea that, that this, you know, the, the sort of original argument, the idea that like the, the rewards outweigh any of the negatives is really only true for the smallest percentage of streamers. The majority of, of streamers are not in that position. And the negatives might be fairly equal to the rewards, you know? There are definitely jobs that are worse or harder than streaming. Like, for example, like, I don't think that I would be able to, I don't think that I would be fulfilled in any way. And I think that I would uh, have a significantly worse time uh, if I was still working that um, runway job, you know, the, the airport job, the airline job. The airline job was really difficult. Like, that job was hard and I didn't get paid well. Uh, a lot of that job was like a, a chunk of that job was carrying luggage, very heavy luggage. And I hurt my body a lot doing that. They do not like, they do not really give you what you need to be able to protect yourself properly on that job. They expect you to basically buy it all yourself, which you might not be able to, or you might not know exactly what you need. I hurt my body multiple times. And not only that, but the other half of the job is cleaning the airplanes. And that shit is fucking disgusting, okay? And I'll tell you, I would rather do streaming than that job. And even still, I can acknowledge that there are things that, uh, uh, there are, like, okay, like, I can tell you a story from that job. One time I had to clean an airplane bathroom Okay? And there was blood shit, okay? All over this bathroom, okay? And we had no management on staff to be able to say, hey, this is a biohazard. And the flight needed to be turned around to be ready to go in the morning, okay? So you know what I had to do? I had to fucking clean the blood shit. Not even joking with you. That was fucking terrible. And it's one of the most disgusting memories that I've ever had to deal with, okay? It was terrible. So 
I'm not speaking without any experience here or without any memory of what I used to do before I was a streamer. It was fucked up. And even still, there were things with that job that I did not have to deal with that I now have to deal with with streaming. That job did not require taking anything home with me, okay? You're, in, you're on the clock and the schedule is unstable because of the type of work that it is, but you're on the clock and when you're done, you don't give a shit, okay? I don't have to think about fucking anything once I'm out of that job. I don't have to prepare anything for the next day. I don't have to, it's, it's you're in, you do your job, you're out. And it's a terrible work while you're doing it, but that's it. I don't have to think about anybody uh, hovering over me. I don't got to think about my reputation. I don't have to think about anything. But there's some pretty gross things that you have to deal with. And the physical labor is pretty goddamn hard. Now in this job, I don't have to do a whole lot of physical labor. I mean, there is some physical aspects. You know, I'm a pretty, uh, you know, active streamer. And there are streamers out there who do IRL stuff that's very physically intense. So again, it depends on the streamer. But to me, it really does seem like the conversation around streaming is, is twisted somehow into, into a sort of competition that never actually drills down to acknowledge what is hard about being a streamer um, and what isn't. And there's another thing that happens sometimes, which is that sometimes you encounter people who are like, oh, streaming is so fucking easy. Oh, uh, you know, I'd do it if I were you. Then do it. Then, then do it. I, I, I would love to see how many people could actually keep up the schedule, the devotion, the, the creativity necessary to continue streaming. Here's another aspect a lot of people um, don't think about when they think, when they're talking about streaming. Look at what happened earlier tonight. Remember when that person came in and started being really fucking weird? How many of you would have been able to, to handle the situation in the way that I did, where I mostly just laughed it off? You guys don't understand, every single night I come on this stream, people say insane shit to me. In this stream, you all didn't see it, but people have said insane shit to me tonight. In fact, there was a comment earlier that went up through chat. Nobody even caught it, but I caught it. I saw it. And that was some fucked shit that was said towards me. So how many people would be able to keep a show going, to be a successful streamer, to actually be able to, the show must go on. How many people are actually able to even remotely, the show must go on? You guys have been here when I haven't even been able to keep the show going on. But most people do not have the ability to not be unseated by unexpected things. You, in order to stream successfully, you have to be able to deal with that. You not only have to be able to deal with it, you need to be able to deal with all that while dynamically being funny, while keeping people engaged and entertained. And the reality is I know for a fact that most people can't do it because I have, do you know, like I, do you know how many people I've known in four years of streaming who no longer stream anymore? I can't even remember all the names. That's how many I've known. I could probably sit here for the rest of my stream tonight listing people who've come and gone. So it's not that simple. But I also don't understand like why people have to talk about it like this, you know? And I think the thing that started this whole discourse was actually a discussion about social exhaustion. And let me tell you, social exhaustion as a streamer is absolutely brutal, okay? And I truly don't think that almost anybody who's commenting on this who isn't a streamer can really understand just how, how far that goes, 
okay? Like the 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 social exhaustion aspect is very 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 extreme. All of the things that I've mentioned are a part of what would build up that up. But when I stream for we've been going for 6 hours now and there has not been one full minute except for I guess the minute when I was literally going to the bathroom. One minute had there has been in which I wasn't 100% socially aware of between 300 and 500 people watching me and somewhere in the ballpark of 200 people chatting and asking me questions for six hours. That's an incredible amount of social outlet that has to be done. And most people can't do that. Sometimes I can't do it. And I don't stream every day for that reason, because I know that I can't do it. And I want what I make to be good. Now there is social exhaustion in other job types too. I'm not saying, uh, I've never said anywhere that this is unique to streaming. For example, I would get social exhaustion in my sales job, especially during the summer months when it would be all day, person to person to person. You have to ask them everything and you gotta talk to them. I would get a lot of social exhaustion from that, like an incredible amount. Sometimes you just go home and you don't wanna talk to anybody. You know, you barely even wanna talk to the people that you love because you're just so tired of talking, you know, and not in a physical way, you're just emotional. You can't come up with the words anymore. So there's other jobs that have this, but it is a very real thing with streaming. And it's not, and, and there's other jobs that are creative that require this as well. Musicians. Do you think that musicians, you know, who are, who are performing in front of tons of people and doing Q and A's and whatever afterwards, do you think that that's like a, you know, purely like, it's just an easy experience? No, it isn't. It's exhausting. It's a very exhausting thing. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't think people talk about this subject in a very productive way generally. And no hate to anybody talking about this, although I do think there does seem to be some anger going on here. Um, no hate, you know, I don't have any problems with any of the people who were, who we, whose tweets we read or anything like that. I just think that I just think that a lot of people uh, don't engage with this particular subject with a lot of depth or, or, you know, compassion at all because uh, it's a job. And by the way, streaming is a very, very, uh, you know, it's a very unstable job. Um, you literally have very, very little, if any, control over how much money you actually are gonna make. Very few streamers have sponsorship deals. Very few streamers have guaranteed reliable income. Um, this is, oh, if, like, I, like, if you look at my income since the beginning, do you guys wanna know what the most profitable year for my show was? 2021. I have never, my stream is three or four times bigger in viewership than it was in 2021. And I have never made as much money as I made in 2021, ever. Not even come close. Why? Well, the economy's fucking different. I have more viewers than ever, but people don't have the money to spare. In 2021, people were in their houses all the time. All they did was watch streams and their money went towards the stuff that was keeping them entertained. Even with a smaller viewership, there were more people willing to pay during that particular period of time. But I've never made as much money as I did in 2021, even though my audience is three or four times bigger than it was. Even though my channel gets more views than it ever has, I make less money than I did in 2021. It's kind of wild, right? So there's a lot of instability in this job as well. There's a lot of instability in various jobs, but 
there's no backup. There's no health care. You can't get you can't get health care in this job from your employer because you're not employed. You're you're a contractor. You can't get unemployment if the website decides to change and fuck you over because you're not an employee. You're a contractor. Um, yeah. I always compare streaming to uh, the Uber of the entertainment world. And I think there are actually a lot of similarities between streaming and Uber. Um, obviously, there are different risks in Uber, um, some that are more than others. Like, for example, in Uber, you have to drive a car around, which is the one of the riskiest things you can do on a pure objective level. Um, driving a car is dangerous as fuck. And even if it's normalized, it's still dangerous as fuck. Um, so streaming is definitely safer in that regard um, and doesn't have the risk of a car being involved. But the social aspect is there, you know, in an Uber job, you're required to be constantly socially engaging with people. You get people in your car who might be uncomfortable and they're in close proximity to you. You might not have a whole lot of power over it. You don't have much employment protection. You don't have much wage protection. You don't have any, uh, you know, you don't have any guarantees on your health care. Um, yeah, so all these jobs are tough in their own ways. And yeah, uh, I think streaming is a much easier job than being like a sewer cleaner, right? I don't even know how much sewer, sewer divers or whatever are paid. Um, definitely an easier job. Um, and also just, just getting paid more isn't a guarantee that like the job makes up for it. Right. Cause like, um, people get paid like a lot of money to do all kinds of jobs that are way harder than they need to be, you know, like, you know, like people working in like a garbage, like a recycling plant probably get paid a decent wage but the work that they're doing is highly dangerous and highly, highly dangerous to their health in multiple ways and also exhausting. So all of this is a very strange conversation to me. And whenever this comes up, I always feel like there's aspects of this, of this conversation that get ignored. We're all working. And yeah, there are trade-offs for every job. But the idea that every single streamer is a millionaire is so incorrect. It's so unbelievably incorrect. And also the idea um, that every streamer is just, you know, playing video games for fun because that's what it feels like to you as a viewer. It's just not correct. And you'll hear this, by the way. You, Some of you may have followed a streamer who went from being a hobbyist to a career streamer. Maybe you haven't. For some of you, that's me. And for those of you who've been around with me for a really long time, you guys remember what the experience was like. You guys have seen me go through it in real time where I went from saying, you know, where I went from, you know, streaming a little bit to streaming all the time to being involved in the craziest shit you've ever seen. Some of which I've talked about on stream, some of which I never will. You guys have probably seen some of that. But if, if any of you out there have seen a streamer go from a hobbyist to a careerist and seen how they've changed and how their approach has had to change, you probably know what I'm talking about. Gayfesh says the bathroom song was written during a time when you were streaming like over 30 hours a week. I was streaming an unbelievable amount at that time. There was a period of my streaming career where I was grinding so, so hard. Oh my God. It was insane how much I was streaming. Um, and I don't do that anymore because I burned out really hard. Um, it was rough. Yeah, it was rough. But I, re I, I feel like now I'm kind of trailing off in this. But I wanted to make sure that I, that I commented on this at least a little bit. Um, 
and there are things, you know, there are things that are nice about this. Like for right now, I could literally just, sh I could turn off the stream, it's true. But that's a lot more true for the millionaire streamer than somebody like me. You know what I mean? I'm lucky and I personally do have a privilege, which is that I have other people in my life who help make my life possible. So if it's too much for me, I can turn it off. But that's not everybody. There are a lot of streamers out there who live by themselves and who make it into the career level and decide to make it their career. And, you know, they can't just turn it off necessarily or they won't make their bills for that month. So I don't know. There are aspects of this job that are great. There are aspects of this job that I love. I love the, I fucking, I love the creative aspect. For me, that is very fulfilling. I love uh, uh, the fact that I can make my own schedule. My God, do I love that. That's why I keep doing it, you know? But there are also aspects of this job that I acknowledge are massive trade-offs and I've chosen to shoulder those in exchange for other things. But I feel like that's true of nearly every job. And uh, there are some jobs that are more punishing and bad than others. But let's be real. If you're here listening to this, you're loaded with privilege, okay? You are completely, completely loaded uh, by comparison to the world. Uh, uh, up, uh, you are loaded up on privilege in comparison to the world if you're listening to this conversation. Because right now there are people dying in lithium mines to make it possible for these computers to even run. Okay, so that's the, the, the grand irony of all of this is that it's basically, this is like, you know, people arguing over who has it easier, the streamer or the, the you know, b small business owner or whatever. It's kind of just like noble lords being like, ah, oh, my province is a farmer's province and yours is a jewel maker's province. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of goofy, so. Anyway, I hope that all makes sense. No real hate to anyone involved. My, for my part in it, I just want people to think about it more realistically. I've worked a lot of jobs, okay? I did a lot of stuff before I started streaming, and I'm thankful for my community, and I'm thankful for the, the position that I have, but I feel that it's fair, and it is not just fair to me, but it's fair to aspiring streamers, people who are younger, who are looking and saying, I might wanna stream someday, to be honest about the downsides and the, the stuff that is really hard about this job. And, you know, worse, push comes to shove, I encourage people to try it out. Give it a try for yourself and see if you can keep up with it. Because I know I, I have kept up with it and I've come many times in my career to points where I didn't feel like I could keep up with it anymore. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe down below if you want to hear more thoughtful takes like this one. And keep listening for the signal.